problems. Johnny Eblen in this fight was unstoppable. I got hands, baby. I got diamond fucking hands, baby. <laughs> and now once again from Windstar World Casino and Resort, Bellator MMA features the middleweight division. Set now for three five-minute rounds introducing the blue corner at five foot eleven, weighing in one hundred eighty-five point nine pounds. His professional record nine and seven. He fights out of Hot Springs, Arkansas. Chauncey, the Machine Boxer. And across the cage, his adversary out of the red corner at six foot one, weighing in 185.5 pounds. His professional record early on stands undefeated at four and oh, fighting out of Kansas City, Missouri, Johnny Eblen. And the referee in charge of the action, Jason Herzog. Jason Herzog, our referee. Middleweight matchup between Jeblin and the machine. Jeblin. Jeblin. Johnny, Johnny Eblin. Eblin. We're going with Jeblin. Jeblin. First round, buddy, you ready? Buddy, you ready? Fight. Here we go. Tonight's Fight Clock brought to you by Miller Lite. Great taste and only 96 calories. Johnny Eblin is in the red gloves. Chauncey Foxworth in the blue gloves. Johnny Eblin's a very aggressive fighter. He was aggressive as a wrestler at Missouri and it is just carried over into his MMA, all of his amateur and his pro fights. He is a guy that he likes to get after, he likes to get in your face, and he likes to create a pressure that breaks you. And he would like to be, John, as you pointed out, the next great mixed martial artist who wrestled at Missouri. One of them is a three-time champion in the Bellator cage, his name is Iron Michael Chandler. Absolutely, beautiful body lock takedown by Jeblin there. You look at what Johnny Eblin is able to accomplish due to his ability to base and control, but he has turned into a guy that his stand-up has gotten very good. And you talk about all the guys at Mizzou, you got Ben Askren, Tyrone Woodley, and Michael Chandler. That's a nice compliment, and if you can even come close to what those guys have accomplished, you're going to have a heck of a career. Are they going to replace those Randy Couture's, Johnny Hendricks, and Daniel Cormier's from Oklahoma State? Or <laughs> is Mizzou the next generation? I'll tell you what, Mizzou's got something going, man. <laughs> nice elbow inside by Johnny Eblen. Of course, Ed Ruth and Phil Davis probably want to say something about that. Heavy kick from Chauncey Foxworth, fighting out of Hot Springs, Arkansas. Mike Brown, Dean Thomas, James Krause, listed as the coaches, trainers for Johnny Eblum. Trains down in South Florida at American Top Team and at home in Kansas City. He just rocked Foxworth. Foxworth doing a good job of keeping himself under composure. He got rocked. Get himself back to that over under. Gives all the cobwebs out from a shot that hurt him. Emblem on your scouting report, partner. Very aggressive, big right hand, and we've seen both of those so far. Yeah, and the one thing I'm seeing, he's starting to really start to utilize those elbows. When he gets in that clinch, he's willing to separate, to throw that elbow. That's starting to show an evolution in his fighting ability and his technique. Because you, most times a wrestler gets a hold of you, gets his hands on you. He doesn't want to let that go. And Johnny Eblen is now starting to get to a point he's letting it go so he can land that strike and do damage to his opponent. Good pace to the start of this fight. By both men, Foxworth closes the gap quickly. Chauncey's losing position off a of technique. You can see that he's getting himself high. He's losing the underhook, and that's why you're seeing John Edlin be able to turn him where he wants. He's got both hands. He's going to go for a run right here. Chauncey needs to be very careful. He doesn't allow Edlin to take his leg and stick it over the top and end up getting his back while he's working to hold on to that Kimura grip. 
It's the one thing with the Kimura, Mike. Every time you grab hold of a Kimura and you try to dig it out when a guy's got it inside, it's nothing but strength. You are pulling with everything you have. And you got to be very careful because you can pull so much that you start emptying that gas tank and your arms start to go dead. Under a minute. Nice job by Johnson trying to work himself back to his feet. He's not there yet. He's almost. Johnny Lubin brings that leg right back on top. Right now, Johnson needs to keep Evelyn's head down. Okay, he's going to pull him away from the fence. Don't let him get your back off of the fence. That fence is your friend. Now it's not. Nice mount position by Johnny Evelyn. Can he get a finish here with 20 seconds on the clock? Bucked off nicely by the machine, Chauncey Foxworth. Good use of the cage, taking and wall walking to get himself over. Round two. Chauncey Foxworth, the machine, making his Bellator debut in the blue gloves. His opponent the same. Johnny Eblem making his Bellator debut. He is in the Red Gloves round one, partner. Round one definitely goes to Johnny Eblen, no doubt about it. Johnny Eblen does the same type of kicking attack that Matt Hughes used to do. He likes to take that step to the outside, bring the leg, leg across. Matt Hughes became famous for doing that against Hayato Sakurai. Johnny's got that leg up. Good grip with his wrist over. Now he just decides if he wants to take and go to the body or if he wants to try to take and bring that leg in between his legs. Good job by Chauncey to move himself out. Little step off. This is the point where if you listen to the corner before, Dean Thomas was talking about get to a half guard and start to cook him, meaning I want you to get to a half guard position, put pressure and start landing shots and just being that guy that starts systematically wearing your opponent down. Come on. That's it. Good. Good. Let's do that again. Guard high. That guard high. Close guard now. Chauncey, so far in this fight, every time he's got himself with his head against the cage, he's done a good job of getting it. Moving himself up and getting his back up on that cage to help him get up. We'll see if he can do it again here. Johnny Eblen wrestled at Missouri, 87 collegiate victories. High school champion his senior year. Started wrestling at age four. 4-0 four as a professional with four finishes. Three by knockout, one by guillotine show. Seventeenth career fight for Chauncey Foxworth. Coming off a rear naked choke third round victory back in January. Johnny's in that exact doing exactly what his coach told. Get to that half guard, start to put pressure. You see him doing the ride. This is like Randy Couture used to like to do. Get him towards the fence, get into that ride. From half guard, just start landing shots and beating your opponent down. John C. Foxworth is a strong individual because he's gotten himself out of some bad positions with just pure strength. You have to be impressed. John even brings him down with that body lock again. John C. is a very tough, strong guy. Jeblin, his nickname, really keeping the pressure on Chauncey Foxworth here in round number two, with under two on the clock. Again, looking for that Kimura grip. The problem with that grip is when you are in a position you don't have control of the legs, it is not a strong position for you to get that arm, and a guy can swing around. Now, the fence is going to stop. Johnny from being able to do that. 
but you got to be very careful when you have both arms in that Kimura grip and you don't have control of your opponent's body, lower body with your legs. Bellator fans, you want the same gear the fighters wear and more? Find new official Bellator MMA gear, Kimbo Slice, Bobbleheads, and much more at bellatorshop.com. Mike Goldberg, Big John McCarthy, our crew here inside the Windstar World Casino and Resort, 19th time. They have hosted Bellator MMA. The first was Bellator 86 in January of 2013. Last time, Bellator 210, November 30th of last year. Had a heck of a card on that night, didn't they? Yes, indeed. That thing was full. I was like, I wish I was there. Where were we? I think we were in Italy. Yeah. Genoa. Genoa, yeah, we were, we were both wishing we were doing that <laughs> Nice job of getting back down. Now he's in side control position. Let's see if Johnny can start to open up a little bit and do some damage. That's not fair. General responding. Oh, yeah. It's always Milan. <laughs> Final <laughs> seconds of the round. Third and final round. Chauncey Foxworth, he's going to have to do something special in this round. He wants to win this fight. Down two love. Red gloves. 4-0 Johnny Eblen. Fighting out of Kansas City. Trains an American top team. Under Mike Brown, Dean Thomas in the crew. Trains at home in Kansas City. Glory MMA with James Krause. Chauncey Foxworth. Trains out of Hot Springs, Arkansas, off the chain MMA. <laughs> Timing is everything. Just did that, just a little bit off. Johnny gets down into his legs. Gonna get him down to the ground here. You see him pull those legs out towards his hips. Chauncey going back to that Kimura. But again, look where his hand's at. It's on his forearm. It's not gonna do anything from there. That's, that's the kind of risk he's got to take, though. I give, I give Chauncey a lot of credit for going after that. And this is uncharted territory big time in the professional career of Johnny Eblen. Because all four of his pro wins have come in the first round. His, I will say, two longest fights were both two minutes and 21 seconds. So he's got a, a 101, a 137, and two finishes at 221. He did go the distance a couple of times as an amateur, but this is the first time he's gone this deep in a fight as a professional, John. No, this is good for him, and he needs this, but what you, one thing you gotta look at, look at what he's got with his left arm. Right now, Johnny has the arm of Foxworth in a position where he's laced it in and he has no control of his left arm. Johnny can open up, if he takes that right hand that he has, he can open up with punches. He just let go of it. Jason Herzog coming in, tell him if you got to move, do something wrong, I'm going to stand you. And if you look at it, uh, Chauncey Foxworth, he's sitting there going, go ahead. <laughs> I would appreciate that right now. Saw the main event, co-main event. Coming up later tonight, live on Paramount Network. Just over 90 minutes away from the start of the main card. Lynn Vassell at heavyweight against Valentin Moldovsky and Sanchez and Carhani in two in the main event of the evening. This is a very good fight for Johnny because he's got a guy that's not giving up on anything. North-South choke attempt. Twist gets himself out. Everything that Johnny goes after, Chauncey Foxworth says, no, I am not settling for that, and he gets himself out. This is the type of fight that changes you as a fighter. Evelyn is not getting damaged, which is a good thing. He's going after a choke right here. You can possibly get a 10-figure guillotine. Not quite there yet. He's working it, John. He's working, but he needs to use that fence. If he can drive his hips towards the fence, 
He can use that fence as a leverage point to help with pressure, it doesn't happen. Chauncey Foxworth is out with 90 seconds on the clock here in this fight. Very impressed with the effort that Foxworth has put out as far as not allowing things to just settle. Every time that Johnny puts him in a position, he fights his way through it. He gets himself to a better position. And that takes a lot of heart and a lot of desire to do, and it is making Johnny work very hard in this fight, something he hasn't had to do in any of his previous four professional wins. Another takedown for the Missouri wrestler. Chauncey again getting himself to position, trying to get himself back up. Evelyn's now getting to the point he's starting to do a ride, just you know, locked, getting myself a nice gable grip around his waist. He's not going to go anywhere. Got my leg laced through. I'm just trying to hold on because I know this fight is getting close to the end, and I am tired of trying to put this guy in a bad position because he keeps getting out. Well, three rounds, 15 minutes, no problem for Johnny Eblen. Goes the distance for the first time in his professional career. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone the distance inside the Bellator cage, we'll go to your three judges, David Sutherland, Michael Bell, Ron McCarthy. All three scored the same 30 to 27 for the winner by unanimous decision. Still undefeated, Johnny Eblen. Jeblin remains unbeaten and wins by unanimous decision here in his Bellator MMA debut. Ladies and gentlemen, now inside the Bellator cage at the 229 post limbs, we go now to three five minute rounds in the middleweight division. Introducing first the blue corner at six foot two, weighing in 184.6 pounds. His professional record 13 wins, seven losses by way of Sao Paulo, Brazil. He fights out of Fremont, California, Mauricio Alonso. And across the cage is adversary out of the red corner at six foot one, weighing in 185.9 pounds. As a professional, he's undefeated at five and oh, he fights out of Coconut Creek, Florida. Introducing Johnny Soldier Boy Eblen. In charge, your referee, Jason Herzog. Jason Herzog, our referee. King Mo. Amongst those in the corner of Johnny Evelyn tonight. That's a big advantage right there. You got no, that no. right. No. Against 39-year-old Mauricio Alonso. His last appearance inside the Bellator cage was against Josh Koscheck at Bellator 172. And the finest referee in the history of mixed martial arts was there that night. This was his fight against Josh Koscheck. I was the referee, so I remember it well. I said that. And he landed some <laughs> big shots, finally putting it out on Josh. Josh had no idea where he was at. That was the biggest win of Mauricio Alonso's career. Another one here tonight. We do have a delay based upon we do not have a ringside position in place. And Jason Herzog, our referee, will not start it until that happens. That fight, John, in which you go out. refed in San Jose was 958 days ago. Alonzo back to face off against 5-0 Johnny Eblem. Doc is in place. Herzog starts the fight, and we are underway. Johnny Eblem in the red gloves. Mauricio Alonzo, the native of Sao Paulo, Brazil, in the blue gloves. Came to the U.S. in 2011. You can see Johnny Evelyn, that nice footwork in and out, just giving him little looks. He is a superior wrestler. His wrestling is outstanding, very tenacious. But got to consider, do I want to go to the ground with Mauricio Alonso, who's got a very good submission game? 
Obviously, Johnny says, I don't care. I'm taking it there. I see what you're doing. I'm listening. I'm with you. And Michael C. Williams just made postlims an official word. He said, if the voice says it, then it's real. Hashtag postlims here on the Bellator app and the zone from Pechanga Resort Casino. The real thing you're looking for here when you're seeing Mauricio Alonso change that angle, create that angle in here, and you're seeing Johnny Eblen just move himself, center himself back up. That's saying that he knows what's happening. He feels those attempts starting to come. And he knows exactly where he's at and what he wants. Third fight inside the Bellator cage for the third degree black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Alonso with a long lineage with the Gracie family training out of the CSA gym, Combat Sports Academy. Kieran Fitzgibbons, the head coach, of course, there. Big body shots with that right hand by Johnny Eblen. Those you can only take for so long. That's why you saw Mauricio Alonso move from an open guard to a closed guard, try to slow that progression down. One thing you'd want to see out of Johnny Eblen here is he's got to start to control his posture. You know you've got the pressure on him to keep him against the fence, and if you posture, those shots that you're able to throw are going to have just that much more power. He's 27 years old, born in Kansas City, a member of American Top Team, Mike Brown, Dean Thomas, Steve Mako, King Mo, all amongst those who coach Johnny Eblen. Coached for many years by James Kraus at Glory MMA in Lee's Summit, Missouri. Obviously had some good people giving him some very good instruction. One, one of the things I want to bring up, Mo Law, one of the highest fight IQs you will ever find. A guy that sees things, understands the game, and comes up with beautiful plans of how to attack an opponent that has a specific skill. Johnny's got some good training partners, too. Jorge Masvidal, Rafael Cavallo, amongst those who work out at American Top Team. And this is a good start for 5-0. and oh. Soldier boy, Johnny Evans. Oh uh, Johnny Evans, he, he's just a buzzsaw right now on top of Alonzo. Alonzo's trying to break that posture, trying to slow down the progression of what Johnny Abrams is able to do, but these are some shots that are getting through. It can only take so much. All four of his finishes, John, have come in the first round. Well, he's trying to make the number five. He got that right, right now. He still has a little bit of time. Mauricio's got a lot of skill off of his back. He understands how to try to control that posture, take it to a point where there's not a lot of power on the shots that are landing. Eblen is working against that. A lot going on right now. 22nd pro fight for Alonzo. He's only been stopped once. Good elbows. Alonzo looking to control the posture of the Missouri Tiger. I talked about John Evelyn having that mean streak, being aggressive, and he is, and you can see it in the way he's fighting. He does not care about what Mauricio Alonso brings in the submission game. He's basically saying, I'm going to take you down, I'm going to be on top, and I'm going to pound you soft from that position because I don't think that you have the skill to submit. Big hammer fist. Good start for Johnny Eblen. You have to ask Mauricio that. That's just not a fair question. No, it's not. Round two. Red gloves for Johnny Eblen. Blue gloves for Mauricio Alonso. Alonzo doing a nice job of moving away from that right hand and the power that it has. Move towards that, cause your problem, move away from it, you're taking steam off of it. Smart. 
back in 2007, Alonso moved from Sao Paulo to Curitiba to train with Anderson Silva. He was there for four years. He said it was a very tough time in his life. He didn't have any money. He basically lived at the gym, but to have the ability to train with a spider was worth the sacrifice in which he made. Alonso trying to utilize those leg kicks to give Johnny a problem. There's takedown. Well timed on that kick, John. And the real question here is now that we're in the center of the cage, without the fence to cause any you know, difference as far as I can choose the side I want to go to, I can swing into things. Let's see if Alonzo is able to open up and try to attack Evelyn with a submission here. Missouri State Wrestling Champion, 87 career wins at Missouri. Johnny started wrestling at age four. I'm guessing he took round one. <laughs> I would think so, yes. I still leave it up to you, though. Well, I like that. But you know, that. In fact, we're going to go that you gave him a 10 9. Wow. In that round, right? right? Unofficial. <laughs> nice job. Unofficial. <laughs> I like what I see. Thank you. You're learning me lots. <laughs> What you, one of the things that you know we talk about is you've got to open up that guard if you're going to go for attack. Right, right now, Alonzo opens it up, goes right back to the close, and when you're in that close guard, there is no submission attempt for you. You've got to open the guard to create the angles and the attacks needed. If you're in that close guard, you're basically locking that person down on top. Now, you might not be getting hurt, but you're definitely not going to be winning the fight. Even posturing, nice shots, nothing big landing, but at least he's showing the judges, I am going after this guy, I am trying to finish this fight. See Alonzo trying to bring his arm across, trying to create an angle, he will just being comfortable in position, landing body shots, trying to posture now, bring more power. This is the old Mark Coleman ground and pound special. The Godfather. <laughs> Working within the guard. Mauricio Alonso, coached by Daniel Gracie for many years, started training in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu in 1997 with Kean Gracie, trained 11 years with him in Sao Paulo. 1997. I remember that year. <laughs> I remember that year too. Someone started. Understanding that this was a sport and wanted to be part of it. And someone's wife told me that it isn't Ryan Gracie. <laughs> look at look at how you've learned. <laughs> right? R is H in Portuguese. Good ground and pound. Hammer fists. Ten seconds. Seven-year-old looks good. Final round, buddy. Ready, buddy. Ready. Fight. Red gloves for the Missouri Tiger. Saul Paulo's Alonzo in the blue gloves. Good shot to the body. Nice change of levels. I think Alonzo realizes I'm behind this. I need to try to do something. He's coming forward, trying to create a pressure on Johnny Evelyn.
Darren Green Oyama, grappling coach at CSA. Soldier Boy possesses a heavy right hand. Let's see if he looks to unleash it here. There it is, right on cue. Didn't connect that time. Down. Johnny Eva just controlling the position. He's shown through the first two rounds that this is not you know, almost with a can opener trying to open the guard there. But this is not a position he is feeling threatened in, in any way. He believes that he can just start to open up and do damage. But I'll give it to Alonzo. He's done a very nice job of minimizing the amount of damage he's taken with a guy that's been on top of him for close to 10 minutes already. And still not, you know, you don't see any kind of little swelling, no marks. So he's doing a good job of defending. Which is kind of validating the point that I made earlier, and you can see why Johnny's only been stopped once in 21 professional fights. Yeah, very good, very good defense. Able to, to, you know, he'll take a shot, but he's able to protect himself from taking that second, third shot that's gonna hurt him. And so, great use of his skill set, which is Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, He's just not in the position where he's able to get that submission against Johnny Evil. And Johnny, of course, as you've said before, wants to become the great, the next great Missouri wrestler to turn the corner and become a mixed martial arts champion. Back the head, head for the ear. Chandler T. Wood and Ben Askren. Not a bad trio. And some hammer fists. This is what happens when you cannot control the posture of your opponent. Alonzo going back to breaking that posture down, pulling Evelyn down on top of him to stop the amount of power he's able to generate with those hammer fists. Everyone looks at a hammer fist and they think, oh, it's just a hammer fist. A hammer fist hurts. You can bring a hammer fist down on someone with the use of gravity as hard as you can punch someone with a straight shot. Like the former heavyweight champion, the Hammer, <laughs> from the Ohio State. The University. Ohio State. The Ohio State University. Mark Coleman. And the late Kevin Randleman, also great ground and pound. Former heavyweight champion. Lost him way too young. <laughs> There's those hammer fists again. And when you, when you utilize hammer fists, you, you get the nickname the hammer or the nickname the smashing machine. <laughs> uh, the hammer was a great. Yeah, that was a nice knee there yeah, inside nice. by Alonzo. He's trying to finish it off here. It hurt him. It did hurt him. Not that it's stunned him to the point where he doesn't know where he's at, but he definitely felt it. Yep, he caught him. <laughs> Gotta be careful. 30 seconds remain. Gotta make sure he keeps that arm to the outside. Sharp elbow from the bottom. But it appears it will be much too little, much too late for the 39-year-old. Nice posture. See that arm just in inside the leg. No danger of crossing anything. It's a high guard. Nothing there. This one goes the distance. Ladies and gentlemen, for the decision, we'll go to your three judges at King side. Your first, Luis Cobian, scores at 30 26, while judges Jackie Dinkin and Glenn Paulson both see it the same 30 27. I'll have it for the winner by unanimous decision, Johnny Soldier Boy Evelyn.
Six and zero oh overall. Two and zero oh inside the Bellator cage for Soldier Boy. From Mohegan Sun Arena, we welcome those joining us at CBSSports.com as the Bellator 250 prelims roll on now. We move to the middleweight division set for three five-minute rounds, introducing the blue corner at 5'11", weighing in 185.3 pounds. His professional record, six wins, just one loss, fighting out of Sisters, Oregon, Tombstone, Taylor Johnson. And across the cage, his adversary in the red corner at six foot one, weighing in 185 pounds even. His professional record undefeated. Six victories, no losses. By way of Kansas City, Missouri, he fights out of Coconut Creek, Florida. Johnny, the Korean Canelo Eblen. In charge, your referee, Kevin McDonald. Hold up, guys, one second. This is Taylor Johnson against Ed Ruth, three-time NC2 a Division I champion out of Penn State. And watch him go for this leg. Look at the entwinement with his. He starts to control it. He gets right a heel hook and taps Ed Ruth out in the first round. Ready we fight? know he's a good wrestler. We know Let's he's go. got a leg lock game. This should be a great fight with John Evelyn. That was his Bellator debut 49 days ago. Tonight's fight clock presented by Geico. Red gloves for Johnny Evelyn. Blue gloves for Taylor Johnson. A lot different approach for Taylor Johnson versus the Ed Ruth. <laughs> Just a little. This was the Taylor Johnson I thought we were going to see against Ed Ruth, and it didn't happen. Johnny Eblen has some wrestling skills, guys. Well, both of these guys have wrestling skills. They both wrestle at major universities, even coming out of Missouri. We know a lot of guys that have come out of Missouri that yes, have incredible oh, MMA right. careers, so. Just a couple. Just, Just a, a couple. couple. A couple world champions. Longest fight of Tombstone Taylor's professional career, six minutes and 34 seconds. That just happened to be his professional debut in which he won. Very nice pressure here. Alvin Harley is doing a lot of good work. He's trying to reach, he wants to reach for that arm that you see Taylor Johnson posting. You can buy it, you can. See how he's reaching with both hands, he's looking for it. That's going to bring Taylor Johnson down. Able to get back, back to his feet. Nice job of controlling the leg by Evelyn. There you go, you're stuck. <laughs> Sag on there, Sag on there. Sag. What Evelyn is doing here is pulling away from Ryan. Knees and kicks there, knees and kicks. So he's able to kind of hook and sag the on the body, trying to get Taylor Johnson to like basically sag to the ground. Or more so to bounce ahead. him off of that cage. You can use that pressure that he's trying to create going against the cage and use it against him. Nice, yeah. I see some good judo guys will tend to do that. Like bounce them off the cage so they can open up the feet. Make it four, right? Make it four, make it four. Make it four, make it four. Make it four. The Korean Canelo, Johnny Eblen, all his hands. four of his That's professional cool. finishes Keep have his hands. come right in the very first round. Have this yeah, 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 make it four. Red gloves good. for Eblen, blue gloves for Johnson. Yeah. Those of you guys that don't know what Canelo yeah, means, means cinnamon. cinnamon. Yeah, yeah. But I think he's also going off of some boxer guy. Look at the head, look at the head. Canelo would never be good. Halfway, halfway. That was a nickname update, by the way. There you hey, go. There you go. American top team. Now you got some. Hey, Steve Moko. And all of a sudden made his way down to South Florida. And is 6-0 as a professional. There you go. Hey, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Evelyn has done a great job of locking his hands, and Taylor Johnson's never been able to get those apart once he's decided to hold on. And that's what's allowed him to control Taylor Johnson this entire time up against the cage here. Nice, there you go, there you go. Now punch, yep. Evelyn also 3-0 as an amateur. So combined 9-0 in mixed martial arts, and Taylor Johnson had one amateur fight in which he won by a second round knockout. This is a very good matchup at 185. Both guys are showing that their grappling experience is way above what most guys have. They're both
both. Back and forth. And you can see Teplin bringing him down. Taylor Johnson right away. Just getting himself back to a position where he can get back to his feet or use the fence. Give him free hand. Evelyn doing a good job. He's good hooking ride, the ride, back John, leg, he's 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 sagging on it. So every time Johnson has to get up, he's got to carry his body weight to get back to his feet. Right. 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 It's physically Damn exhausting, it. John, to have to keep getting up and keep getting up. But as much as I say it's exhausting for the person to get up from the bottom, it's even more exhausting for the person to have to keep returning them to the mat. Yeah, because you're actually lifting up a 200-pound man. There you go. Nice and loose. Hands up. Hands up. Hands up. Footwork. Hands up. 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 CBS Sports Hands Network Hands switches Hands over to the Hands gridiron Hands for some Mountain West action. Colorado State battles Fresno State. Catch it all on CBS Sports Network. The 24-hour home on CBS Sports. There you go. One, three, two, one, three, high. Set it up. Bingo, bingo. Back in first, first round of action. Back in fourth. Oh, thank you very much. I was round two. Oh, big right hand by Taylor Johnson. That hurt, Johnny. Oh, He's still hurt. Yep. Three. Three nice shots in a row. Here go. Oh, oh, nice go. Side. Beautiful Three. job by Taylor. This is what I'm yes, talking sir. about. All go that go work hard. just go takes hard. a good round Saturday here. And he has yes. hurt Johnny yes. early in this round. And has come out ultra aggressive. Nice job of getting his head up high. Nice, Johnny. There you go. You know what to do there. Not where you want to settle, though, after you just landed a bunch of kills. Hey, because you're letting him get his wits back. Like Goldie was saying, Taylor Johnson hasn't been rooted in six minutes of his career. So that being said, we, they exchanged in the beginning where he landed the clean shots. How much energy did he use? And now is he starting to suck wind a little bit? There you go, right to it, right to it. There you go. Now you can touch him. He's at six right now. Six thirty-four. Burn up, burn up. Watch that, Josh. Professional debut. Just like in wrestling, though, John, you've got to keep your forehead off the mat. Keep your keep your forehead off this canvas. Get it up. Get your head high, chin tucked, and start trying to get back to your feet right now. Taylor Johnson needs to do that right away. Otherwise, he's just carrying the weight and getting more tired as the fight goes on. This is a great turnaround for Johnny Evans. He's being able to get on top, get his wits back, and now he's the one in control. They're right in front of us, so I'm sure Taylor Johnson. I'm sure. Much to your point, you're almost out. Big, heavy Burn breaths, up. breaths up. being taken by Tombstone and hand. Taylor he Johnson. Longest fight officially he now in his professional career. He went his hands, yes, the place. Get that off the canvas. He went his hands. Put that forehead down on the canvas. He's got to get some sort of wrist control, start working his way back to his feet. Even knee slide forward a little bit to create space between their hips so he can get back up. For the memory time, like you said, I can feel the, I can feel those knees from here, and I'm thinking to myself, oh, it hurts. I hate those feelings. <laughs> I walk past the gate now, and I hear me punch and hit. I'm like, oh, why did I do that? Right there. Right there. Right there. Right now, if you get that left leg and could have got that halfway. hook in, it would have helped him in the right. position. On Taylor Johnson's back. He's all working. you got to face him. You have to face him. Yeah, Taylor needs to get his hips closer to the fence, bring that right nice. ankle face. closer to the fence as well, and start working Red. his way up. Get that left arm. And now back up, though. As soon as your knees hit, you got to stay tight and then pop right back up. These are things that you, these are things that wrestlers will practice nonstop in the wrestling room. M uh, what's it called? MMA fighters will tend to get away from that type of stuff. Stuff, two minutes, but two they should always be drilling it. As soon as you get taken down the mat, just mat return right there, he should be popping there back up. Is. Nice little roll there through, though. Came with the roll through. He's got to be very careful of his legs right yes, here. Sir. Nice job. He's figure forward his leg. Keep. Yes, sir. Taylor Johnson will be able to extend that out, but he needs to figure out, okay, where do I need to go from here? There you go. Taylor's looking towards a toe hold. Yep. Adjust, adjust, adjust. 
decided yeah, against that. That toe hold would potentially turn into a knee bar, too, from the position that he's in. There you yes, are. Back yes, to the again. top. Now what Taylor Johnson do is sit on him, make him carry his weight. Now a whole lot that Evelyn can do from this position. Clear your knee, clear your knee. Now top. So you hear, you hear Taylor position. Johnson's corner say stay on top. What Taylor Johnson needs to do is throw that right motion, leg motion. over the head. If he's able to do that, he can turn the face if he wasn't able to do it. Good composure here in round two. Johnny Evelyn. Johnson came out looking to finish it quickly. And Evelyn got a great job since that point. Weathered the storm and has control of round two. It doesn't really matter how great a condition you have. Every time you're Johnny. carrying you someone's weight, stop. you keep tend to get a little more Johnny. tired and a little bit faster. You need that concrete to get up. We're seeing that right now with Taylor Johnson. He has some real hard in the shots in this round. And he's getting returned got the from that. Got the and every time he gets lifted and returned, his body got gets longer instead of staying on the ball. He's popping right back up on his back. 30 seconds. And with every time that he has picked up and dropped on that mat, that energy bar just starts to wilt. Like a video game. Yeah. We could will do that shit. My hair, my hair. <laughs> Both guys talking. We you, you hear Taylor Johnson basically responding to us. <laughs> they can hear you guys. Stop. Clean break. Hey guys, you never know yeah, how a weight cut back. goes for a fighter because <laughs> oftentimes <laughs> that can have an effect yeah. on They'll tell you. <laughs> Third and final round. Evelyn let's in let's the red gloves, let's blue let's gloves for hey. Taylor Johnson. Both guys with trips on that man. That's really nice by both. This is not where Taylor Johnson wanted to be, though. This is a bad place for him to be right now. On his back, up against the cage. Wrist control and touch him. Let's get busy. And a little bit tired. You see him turning to get himself back to his feet. Yeah, yeah, right to the figure four. There you go. He's never stopped working to get himself up, so very impressive with all of the pressure that Johnny Evans has been able to put on. Yeah, but I feel like Taylor Johnson has the better stand-up and the more powerful stand-up. He should have kept himself at distance. Instead, he jumped in with a flying knee, put himself in range to clinch, and this is what ended up resorting to where they're Touch those legs. Need those legs. John, we talk about all the time, Fight good, IQ. Good, good. Your corner should have been tight between those quads, like, hey, we land a few shots in the second round. Yep. Yeah. Let's keep that distance. Oh, okay. hey, you have the straighter punches. Right you're you're right doing more damage right on the feet. Concrete. Let's try and Tuck keep this on the feet. If things go south, okay, we can always try to wrestle as well. And you can say that. You can believe that you have the bigger power. You've already heard it. He knows that you can hurt him. That's going to make him a little bit less anxious to come forward on you. Well, Evelyn has yeah, embraced knee, the grind. That's solid. What he That's a good done. strike. Oh, nice. He's good power. To break good down power. His opponent good power. Systematically. And he said in his unanimous decision when Keep touching those back legs. to Bellator 229. Oh, good shot. Good when he shot. assessed it, he said his Start pace time. and his grip oh, no, showed him that. Fight. Wrist, wrist and right to the that's right. what we're seeing again here. Wrist with wrist three wrist minutes wrist on the clock. Yes, yes, round good, three. Good, there you go. He's got that nice left hook. That's going to keep him on. Evelyn's gone back to his roots. Yep. He is, you know, the, 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 the watch the progression of his MMA career has really gotten into being a stand-up guy, liking the stand-up, liking to be a guy that good ride, good is ride. controlling, to, yeah, you know, where that fight happens in the good, cage. Good. He's gone right back against Taylor Johnson Very to his good, roots, Johnny. and his wrestling is shining. Nice, there, Johnny. Well, we saw why early in the second round. That's exactly why he went back to his roots. Because he knew that Taylor Johnson's dangerous on the feet and everywhere. You don't know what's going to come. When you're fighting someone where you don't know where the punches kicks are coming from, because they come from all different angles, good ride. it's sometimes better just to play it safe. Let me just take you down, hold you here. Good, good, good. Nice Thank roll through by Taylor Johnson, go. going for the leg, but he gets stuck in that Good. position. Look for your elbows, look for your elbows. Taylor Johnson started his yes. grappling yes. training. Come on. Look to Lister. Lister. Limp arm, limp arm. Bunch of leg lockers, as you told us before, Big John. Hand up the mat. Well, you're getting, Watch your legs if you're in there with Tombstone. Let's get into a leg lock. Hand up the mat, on the chest. Having Dean Lister on your side is probably going to help you. Two minutes, two minutes. Kick back, go to half. Kick back, go to half. Under two minutes. Kick back. Kick back, go to half. Hit it, hit it. 
You can pass, go all the way pass. back to look, back. You know, John Danaher and all the guys that he's training Let's now. Neiman Gracie. Kick back, go to Kick back. Just a beautiful example. Neiman Gracie yeah, tapping out pass, John you Fitch you pass, John. in his retirement fight with a leg lock. All of that started based upon Dean Lister when John Danaher is working out with him and basically Dean Lister said, why would you forget 50% of the body? 120, 120. And those are massive. Kick back. Kick that left leg back. You can go to half. Kick back. American top team, South Florida against American top team. The elbows too. Affiliate in Portland. Just keep Evelyn working. Just keep and Johnson. Yeah, get your head free. Use your hand. On the clock, third and final round. Go to half. Kick back. Kick back. Go to half. I just want to see a little more sense of urgency out of Taylor Johnson. Yeah, he's, he's got to do something in this position. It's either, you know, get going on, getting yourself back to your feet, or the submission, but you, you can't stay on your back. 40, 45, 45. Watch your knee bars and everything. He's going to get desperate now. He's going to get desperate. See, during all these exchanges on every time he gets back, there's no hand fighting, there's no wrist control. He's not trying to break He's never gotten his hands inside. Yeah. He's never been able to get that left arm. Nice roll through. Again. Nice reshot though yeah, by yeah. the yes, Absolutely, but again, that leg is in trouble. He needs to be careful. 20 seconds. 20 seconds is a lot of time. There, you go. there it is. He's trying Break to stretch it. it out. 15. Beautiful. He's unable to stretch it out right at this time, but if he does, he's got a hill hook Hold on to that. He still doesn't have it. Finish it. Break it. What's that? Send his leg go. Oh, it's hips, tight. Hips, 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 hips. hips. Now it's getting extended. Hips. Final second. What? Oh, he survives. I know you brought it. <laughs> the judges have rendered their decision. Here is Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, for the decision, we'll go to your three judges at cage side. Your first, Jared Vallel, scores it 29 to 28, while judges Doug Crosby, David Torelli, both see it the same 30, 27. I'll have it for the winner by unanimous decision, Johnny the Korean Canelo Evelyn. For those that may have just joined us live in the UK, we thank you for tuning in on BBC iPlayer as inside the Bellator cage will go now to the middleweight division. Scheduled for three five-minute rounds introducing the blue corner at six foot three, weighing in 185 and one half pounds. His professional record, 18 wins, six losses, fighting out of Phoenix, Arizona, Daniel Demigod Madrid. Yeah. And across the cage's adversary fighting out of the red corner. At six foot one, weighing in 185 pounds even. He's undefeated as a professional. Seven victories, no defeats. Fighting out of Coconut Creek, Florida, by way of Kansas City, Missouri. Johnny Diamond Hands Evelyn. And the referee in charge, Todd Anderson. Todd Anderson will oversee this middleweight matchup between Johnny Eblen and Daniel Madrid. Gegard Mousasi atop the middleweight mountain Ready. here Ready. in Ready. Bellator MMA. Bell and the first round underway. Eblen in the red gloves, Madrid in the blue. And immediately Eblen with the cap kick on the lead leg of Madrid. That was checked by Eblen. Aggressive start by Eblin John and landed with that combination. That was a nice left that he landed with. You see that Madrid's going to want to try to keep the range in perspective for him, meaning that he doesn't want to overextend, the, which is going to allow Johnny to come inside and, and work for that takedown. When I tell you that 15 of Madrid's 18 wins have come via submission, that will probably let you know where he would like to see this fight go. For Eblin, three of his seven victories have come thanks to his striking prowess. In fact, Madrid has just one knockout win on his resume, and that came back in October of 2015. 
Nice side kick. kick. Yeah, side kick by Eblen. Madrid utilizing a lot of feints inside. Johnny just nice and steady, relaxed, and trying to just figure things out, see his opening. Body kick by Eblen. And that kick forcing Madrid to go orthodox. As Eblen comes in with a combination. That was a nice, strong kick by Madrid. Eblen ate it, but that is not one you want to take a lot of abuse with. Just be careful not to let that kick continue to land in that same spot. Really a little bit of a different game plan that you're seeing out of Johnny Ablin when, when you're looking, he hasn't even taken the shot. He's been relaxed in the stand-up. Even when he's gone and, and closed the distance, everything has been about just landing his shots, not about getting to that clinch position or looking for the takedown. Evelyn telling us that he knows that Madrid's biggest strength is his BJJ. He feels his biggest weakness is his power. And takedown defense, oh. and he could not take the power of Evelyn there as Madrid goes down, and Madrid's in trouble. Madrid is finished. Johnny Evelyn improving to 8-0, 4-0 in Bellator with his fourth knockout. Wow! Stay, 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 stay. Johnny Eblen electrifying yeah, yeah. in the Bellator Whoa! MMA cage. I got hands, baby. I got diamond fucking hands, baby. <laughs> and you are shining bright like a diamond tonight. Take a look at this nice switch step. Two, throws four, the right, but that's left hand that touches that chin. Knockout. That's what puts Daniel Madrid down. A nice clean shot by Eblen. Comes after him. Heavy ground and pound. Just tries to swing heavy shots, hammer fist down, and one touches that chin, and you see Daniel Madrid go out from that hammer fist shot. Again, watch the switch step. The right hand comes, it gets blocked, but the left hand comes through and touches that side of the jaw. That's what puts Daniel Madrid in the position where he is trying to defend the hammer fist, seal the deal. And Eblen picks up his first finish under the Bellator MMA banner. He's 4-0 in Bellator, that his first knockout win under the bright lights. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, it comes to an end, two minutes, 44 seconds. Round number one by knockout, the winner, Johnny Diamond Hands Eblen. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to Bellator MMA from Mohegan Sun Arena, live on Showtime. We kick it off here at Bellator 262 with three five-minute rounds in the middleweight division. Introducing the blue corner at six foot, weighing in 186 pounds, making his Bellator debut. He brings 10 professional victories, four losses, by way of Upper Sandusky, he fights out of Columbus, Ohio, Travis Bam Davis. And across the cage, his adversary fighting out of the red corner at six foot one, weighing in 186 pounds. As a professional, he's undefeated, eight wins, no defeats. By way of Kansas City, Missouri, he fights out of Coconut Creek, Florida, Johnny Diamond Hands Eplin. And the referee in charge, Kevin McDonald. Something to ponder. All of these young, huge prospect, undefeated fighters that finally stumbled. Always seem to do it, John, against a veteran who you weren't expecting. Ready to fight? With great jujitsu. Ready to fight? Let's go. We're going to see right now Johnny Evelyn is coming out. He feels confident in this fight. But Travis has got very good stand up and he's got a good ground game. You heard Coconut Creek, which means American Top Team. And the run they are on in Bellator is absurd and continued in the premiums tonight. Syed Soma and Cody Law. Travis 
Davis says Johnny Eblin is a front runner, quick starter. He said he goes berserker when he gets you on the ground, which is not a bad description for what Johnny Eblin does. Oh, that's a pretty accurate description. The one thing that Johnny's got in his back pocket, he is a good wrestler. He can always go to that wrestling technique when he wants. University of Missouri has put some pretty good ones in the MMA. You talked about Travis Davis, the fights that he has lost, even the fights he's won. He is a risk taker. So he's, again, high risk, high reward. He is a risk taker. When we talk about risk, he will go after a submission when he doesn't have that exact position that we would want you to be in to go for that you know, type of submission, but he'll go for it. That's one of the things I really enjoy watching with him. He tries to finish fights, be it in the stand-up or on the ground. Oh, he just took a big shot. He did. You can see it hurt him. You see that little stump over his foot? He got buzzed by it. Eyes are wide open now. You see him trying to parry that left hand of Johnny, parry it down so he can bring the right hand over the top. This American Top Team thing, it's, it's all, it's building on each other. The success is building. And the guys that you are training with, and the coaches, and confidence just grows. Each guy helps the other guy. It, well, success is contagious when you're around guys. You know, look at the guys that Johnny Inman is training with. Every one of them undefeated right now in their career. You know, he is every day going in the gym and getting better and better. So one thing that I love, what I see out of him, is he wants to learn new things all the time. That's what makes him a very dangerous fighter. First attempt at a level change. No one that wrestles with Steve Mako ever comes out of it without lacking confidence in their wrestling against anybody else. And this is what we're talking about. And again, just before that takedown, Johnny landed a very solid left-right combination. King Mo, a very familiar face, mask or not, to Bellator fans. Mike Brown, one of the best that's ever done it, both inside the cage and then as a coach, unbelievable. Take down, into the ride, we'll land a couple of shots. So this is where Johnny, he stays patient. And one of the things that Johnny doesn't worry about is he, he, he'll tell you, I like when guys try to stand up. In fact, I'll let them stand up so they feel like they're getting somewhere, and then I just take them back down again just to take all that will away from them. We had a really interesting conversation with Johnny Eppel the other day, and his, to call him a student of the game is an understatement. But he has literally chosen the top people in every part. And he's, he's mentioned names to us, like Canelo, like Raymond Daniels, like in every possible field there is. Like he wants to be as good as Raymond Daniels with this. There's, there's got to be a danger in spreading yourself a little too thin. Ambition's good. Oh, ambition is great. I mean, you look and you say, you know, I want to have the spinning techniques of Raymond Daniels. Well, that's a good person to say, I want to emulate what they do. Oh, that's a big shot. Don't work on being the same because there's too many elements to the game. Followed by the takedown. This right, just look at the tenacious pace that Johnny is bringing right now. This is hard to deal with if you're Travis Davis. It has only been finished once in 14 professional fights. You can see why, because he's taking some big shots here. Johnny Eblen getting him going in, coming out. A lot of good work by both fighters, but Johnny's been controlling exactly where this fight's going to be fought. Travis Davis has done some boxing. Undefeated, in fact. He's confident everywhere. He's in there with a different level of animal right now. Very impressive first round for the undefeated Johnny Evans. That was a nice that, low kick by is, Travis Davis. That, that left a, a little memory thought into the head of Johnny Elbert for the first time. This really has all the makings 
Josh said during the prelims, he was exactly right. We were all on the same page. If any fight here is going to steal the show, this was going to be it. Well, that's because we've all watched Travis fight, and we know how tough he is, and we know that he does not give in ever, and he creates situations that create a fun fight, something where action takes place. I think he said that. I don't usually listen to Josh talking about it. He said that, right? Somebody something like that. Did. He's not going to survive with Jenna Lee. Nice drop down. Great change of levels by Johnny. He's got, it, he's got his hands hooked on those legs. He should be able to get him up. See Travis trying to dig that underhook. That's impossible to defend at this level. Travis Davis, 34 years old, a late start because of his military service. And that's Johnny getting his head high right now. You get your head high on that position. Now you can drive him down towards the canvas. Travis trying to use that fence as a, as a balance point. Keeping that arm posted up. Look at where his right arm's at. That's what's going to give Johnny problems. He needs to take that away. Don't grab it. Johnny Evelyn, not even, not even a thought of surrendering the position. Right? The guy gets up. He's, you're exactly right. It's what, what he talked about with us. Let him up. Take him back down. And what you're seeing, you're, there you go. you're seeing Travis trying to fight the hands, which is a, a, the right thing to do. You can't break the grip of Johnny, and if you can't break that grip, you're just going to go on for a ride right back down to the campus. Johnny Evelyn, like most great fighting careers, started as a younger brother with older brothers who beat the heck out of him. <laughs> Why is it that story is always the same? <laughs> it is, isn't it? <laughs> it's right up there with I had the best camp of my life and my weight's on point. And I've never been hurt. And this is what Johnny was talking about, just taking it, basically breaking someone's mentality in the fight. Letting him get up and then taking him right back down. Proving to him, you cannot stop what I do. McDonald reminding of her own line of guys who can reach over the fence. <laughs> There's some heavy shots Travis has taken there. He's got to be wary of. He keeps on looking to grab over the fence, too. Future at 185 in Bellator is looking better and better every day. There are some blue chippers on that list. You saw right there, Johnny trying to pull him out through the cage, and it was actually the grab of the cage that kept Travis from going. Overhand right, left got in. These are big shots. That was set up by a big right elbow. This is what we're talking You saw how Travis went for that gear. He did. It wasn't in the position you want to go to give up that position, putting your back onto the canvas. That was a Hail Mary. Yeah. This has been a game performance by Travis Davis, but he has been mauled here through two rounds. So they always talk about the good news is you're on the big show, under the bright lights, on the main card. The bad news is that usually means you're facing somebody elite on the other side. And you can see right now, yeah, numbers. Davis has landed 13 of 34 compared to 61 of 92 for Johnny. Looks like Travis Davis got a cut on his forehead. That is not Johnny's, Johnny's own that he's wearing. Rocking, get him rocking, Travis. Attack his face. Attack his face, Travis. Rocking back and forth. Yes, sir. Commit him out. Him you out. can see Travis Davis is in shape because he has put out a lot of energy here. He just can't stop what Johnny Edwin is doing. Travis Davis was thrilled to be here at Mohegan Sun this week in Bellator because he had to do that PFL bubble. <laughs> Trapped in that thing for weeks and weeks. Yeah, that's a couple week bubble, that's not bad. Neither is this for 10 minutes. Clean break, guys. We got a little bit too far. Yeah, exactly. Travis Davis is talking. Trying to land that counter shot. 
He's talking the whole time. But instead of talking, he needs to start throwing those hands on just a little bit more. Difference, obviously, in heavyweight and middleweight, but the strong wrestling following the MMA, the MMA version of wrestling in the ground and pound. Well, right now, you know, I'm sure that Travis's corner told him that we need to finish. So he's looking to land that big shot, but he should be looking just to land clean shots. Don't worry about throwing big, heavy shots. Land clean shots that lead you to that big shot. Get a lot of ones for each fighter. Absolutely. Come on, And we've seen dominating the fight can sap your own energy. Yeah, but you can really, right now, as you're watching the fight, look at the diaphragm of Johnny Evelyn. He is absolutely under control, no heavy breathing. He's in shape. He's feeling very good right now. And that is his, there is a coldness that comes in his personality. Efficiency. Just right there with that takedown. And watch the way that he just pulls the ankle out. Little effort, doesn't burn a lot of energy in getting the takedown. Travis looking for the Kimura grip. Told us he's trying to become more mechanistic in his lifestyle, more scientific. And again, Johnny going back to that gable grip that Travis has had so much trouble trying to break. Yeah, oh my goodness. Only the back, he's got him set up for another one. Again, remember, Travis Davis held on to the cage in the first round of this one. Missouri Tigers are proud of that moment right there. Again, you saw Johnny setting up, his hips coming in. Whenever you're going to see that suplex, watch for the fighter's hips to come hip to hip against his opponent. Same thing. Dragging the ankle out, beautiful transition by Johnny. Why burn all that energy trying to pick him up? This just shows where Johnny is now becoming a smart fighter, which is only going to make him more dangerous in the cage. Full marks here for Travis Davis. This has been a pretty good battery for 13 minutes. Oh, yeah. He's still hunting for it. He's still going. That's what I love about him as a fighter. I mean, he's got no give and never settles. He's always looking to finish the fight. Just right now, he's in against a guy technically that can just control the position, land big shots, and make him work at a pace that's hard for him to sustain. So he's very verbal during the fight. He had a fight in his younger days where he was basically talking to the other coaches. Minute 30, Johnny. Minute 30. That's it, Trav. You're doing good. Johnny Upland's talking has been a little different here for 14 minutes. Johnny's, another one. Johnny's been talking with the tape. Yeah. Minute and a half, Trav. Minute and a half. Clark, Clark, Clark. This just, you know, the, right, this ride that you're seeing, Johnny, all this pressure. This is exhausting to have someone on you with their weight like that is. He doesn't, have, he doesn't have a good position for that choke to work. It's on the chin, but it can be a crank, and it can definitely dislocate your jaw if he gets enough pressure on it. I don't believe he has his other hand fixed in a position where he can create that type of pressure. But don't think that because that's not under the chin that it cannot cause Travis Davis a problem. He flattened out for a second. Johnny getting a little high. Right away, gets his hip, hip back. You see how he gets hips to hip? Just shows his wrestling prowess. This was a relentless performance by Johnny Evans. You know he wants one more. Oh, he wanted one more. He's giving it everything he had. You can see his brain moving towards it. And he didn't need it. This was dominant Stop. by Johnny Evelyn. Ladies and gentlemen, for the decision, we'll go to your three judges at cage side. Your first, Brian Minor, scores the fight 30 to 27, while judges Doug Crosby and Chris Lee both see it in the same 30 
to 26. I'll have it for the winner by unanimous decision, Johnny Diamondhead Evelyn. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to Bellator MMA Live on Showtime tonight here at Mohegan Sun Arena. Bellator 272 gets underway now with three five-minute pounds in the middleweight division. Introducing the blue corner at six foot three, weighing in 185 pounds even, making his Bellator debut. He brings 10 professional victories, three defeats, by way of Nevis, Minnesota, he fights out of Phoenix, Arizona, Colin Younghart Hukbadi. And across the cage, his adversary, fighting out of the red corner, at six foot one, weighing in the same, 185 pounds as a professional, he's undefeated at nine and oh, fighting out of Coconut Creek, Florida, by way of Kansas City, Missouri, introducing Johnny Diamond Hands Evelyn. And when the bell rings, the referee in charge, Brian Miner. to Southpaw. Body kick by Evelyn. Beautiful counter. Nice job by Johnny Evelyn. Watch him catch the kick and then throw the beautiful left right. Solid right hand that landed for Evelyn. Kick right underneath the armpit, and it's all Shotty Evelyn early. Huckbody launches a low kick and another one of his own, but countered by Evelyn. Keeps that left hand, and Johnny Evelyn going on the attack and taking Huckbody to the canvas. Huckbody eating a lot of shots right here. He needs to do something other than what you're saying. And Young Huck. His fifth knockout victory. He is six and zero oh in Bellator MMA, number five, and a man to keep your eyes on. Definitely a man to keep your eyes on. You have to be very impressed with what you saw out of Johnny Evelyn. He came to fight. He was doing everything offensive. Take a look at what happens here. Nice leg kick, and then he goes after the shots. Big left hand touches. That affects Huck body. Evelyn then goes after him, takes him down, and right away, heavy ground and pound, landing a big left hand. That jackhammer just kept on finding its spot. Huckbody turns his back. You cannot do that in a professional fight. That's what's going to bring the referee in. Good stoppage. Nice win by Johnny Evelyn. It would take longer to come up with his list of nicknames than and it would to rewatch what we on. just saw it as. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, referee Brian Minor steps in, weighs off the contest due to strikes. Official time, one minute, 11 seconds into round number one by TKO. He's still undefeated, Johnny Diamond Hands Evelyn. Bellator MMA now features middleweight set for three five minute rounds live on Showtime. We introduce first the blue corner at six foot one, weighing in 185.8 pounds. His professional record undefeated with 10 wins, no losses, fighting out of Coconut Creek, Florida, by way of Kansas City, Missouri. Introducing the human cheat code, John Hill Evelyn. Across the 
Cage, his adversary, fighting out of the red corner. At six foot one, weighing in 185.8 pounds, just off a world title challenge, he enters with 18 professional victories, five defeats, fighting out of Wilmington, North Carolina, John Salter. In charge, your referee, Mike England. Start right over here, bud. Right over here. Start right over there. John Salter wrestled out of Lindenwood University right here in St. Charles, Missouri, 2007 NAIA National Wrestling Champion at 174 pounds. For Eblen, he's looking to show up and show out in his Great native fire. show Great me fire. state. Fire round. Bell round number one, touch of gloves and the Southpaw Salter, Orthodox Eblen. Little feeling out process here in the Opening seconds, both pawing at each other. And it's Eblen initiates the first offensive attack, but more of a just getting to know you, a little bit of a feeling out process, this John. Is, this is, that was a nice right hand landed by Johnny Eblen. Like, the one thing about Johnny Eblen, is, look, his confidence is growing. He is now starting to believe. A lot of people don't realize that a fighter, even when they're 5-0, oh, they still have doubts. They're not sure. Johnny Eblen is now believing in his ability. He knows how good he is. He trains with studs every day at ATT, and he believes that now is his time. ATT, well-deserved reputation of taking prospects and turning them into savages. Eblen, all six of his wins via knockout or submission have come in the opening round. For Salter, he has 13 first round finishes. Just past the minute mark. John Salter giving a couple different reads. That was a beautiful left hand landed by John Salter on the entry by Johnny. Eblen looking for the takedown, scoops out the legs and secures it. Salter very comfortable off his back. Despite starting jiu-jitsu training at the age of 21, a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt and uh, great fight IQ when it comes to the ground game for John yeah, Salter. Let's, let's, let's just be honest about this. There's a lot of black belts out there. They are not the level of John Salter. Salter is a world-class grappler. The guy is a phenomenal jiu-jitsu practitioner with the wrestling that he already already had to bring in. Yeah, and uh, speaking of wrestling, Eblen started at the age of five, wrestled D1 for the University of Missouri. Alum include Ben Askren and Tyron Woodley. Michael Chen, I believe. Yeah, and you see right there, you see right away, Salter bring it up for a triangle attack. Look at his coaches. Johnny having to work his way through that. Look at this guy can move. He's going for, going for the arm now. Salter Johnny's looking in trouble. The submission, the 11th of his career, looking to knock Johnny Eblen from the ranks of the undefeated. Eblen submit, and Eblen slips out. Well done, and now in the close guard of Salter. Look, man, you get into those Spider-Man-like attacks, all of a sudden that web is closing in around you. That's what John Salter will do. Johnny needs to be very careful about when he allows himself to get some separation and that he needs to be bringing shots down on Salter to stop his ability to lock up those submissions. Final two minutes of the opening round and Johnny Eblen trying to deliver some short right hand. Salter trying to control his posture. This is what John Salter cannot do. He cannot sit here and allow Johnny Eblen to be in his guard and just let him grind on him. This is not gonna be beneficial for what John Salter is capable of doing off of his back. He needs to start creating angles. He needs to start making Johnny Eblen not want to be in this position. Interestingly, Eblen popped up and then put himself back. <laughs> One of those, you know, you think, I want to gain space because I want to punch and then I want to control. Right. And that's part of when you see a guy being down in this position like Johnny, part of it is to control the posture, control the movement of John Salter who's underneath him. He does not want John Salter to what we call off angle him and start creating an angle that can put him in 
a submission type situation. Hublin. There's a short forearm across the jaw of Salter, who's done a Good job of neutralizing the attack of Johnny Evelyn, who is in top position, but there is a over the left eye of yeah. Salter. Salter's got a small cut over that left eye. I don't think it's really creating any kind of problem for him right now, but all these little shots that Johnny's starting to put on him, John doesn't wear damage well. You know, he's a guy, some guys, you can hit him with a brick and they, it never shows. Some guys, you breathe on them, and they show. <laughs> well, both fighters, big elbow, breathing heavily after a tough opening five minutes. Well, Johnny Eblin would uh, prefer not to get into a pitched battle. He says that he loves to control and dominate his opponent, while Salter, of course, looking to try to turn things around here in the second round. My cracked crystal ball says that Big John McCarthy's unofficial scorecard reads 10-9 for Evelyn. It's a good crystal ball you have. Due to the takedown and the control on the ground? Yeah, you take, you, you take a look in the stand-up, he actually landed the better shots, and then on the ground, although Salter had the attack, it never was that close to being a good submission, and he took a lot of shots, even some of them were small. So it's going according to plan for Eblin, who says he prefers to strike and wrestler. He likes the grappling game, but wants to really mix it all up. And here in the opening minute, Ian Salter trying to find an angle, trying to find an opening. That's exactly what Salter's doing. He's trying to look for that moment. He sees that when Johnny throws, he tends to take his head and he dips, dips it off to the right or left and he's trying to time that motion. Eblin was trying to take Salter's head off with that left hook that whiffed by. Oh, Eblin goes for the inside kick, checked by Salter. Both of them trying to navigate distance. And oh. that was... That was Perfectly solid. in range for Evelyn. Lands that body kick, right hand backs. Salter up. Yeah, right now, as you're seeing, John Salter starting to go back a little bit more often. And he's off, he's not getting his head off the center line. Absolutely, side. exactly the, the point. Notice his, his motion's actually stopped a little bit, breathing a little bit harder. It's not that he's tired. It's just he's not too sure where the attack from Johnny's going to come. And that's exactly what Evelyn wants to keep it, unpredictable. Doing a great job of really mixing his attack, going low, high, and showcasing all of those skills. And, and look, at Salter is looking for the takedown. He's looking for that opportunity. He's just not seeing it. Take a look at the base and positioning of Johnny Evelyn and the way he's kind of squatting down. You saw that nice little twitch of the leg. That's going to stop Salter at times. And now he goes for the takedown. As it did against Gegard Mousasi. Hello. The twitch of the leg. Something that uh, Salter says uh, really got into his head. And now Evelyn securing another takedown and has Salter against the fence. Evelyn, yep, 30 years of age, but just his 11th professional fight. Look, 30 years of age is still young as a fighter. And Johnny Evelyn's got a lot of upside to him coming up. And, he, and he's, like I said, he's getting better right here. The and he's fact, well preserved for a 30 year <laughs> And the fact that he's actually willing to take the fight to the ground against someone like Salter, who everyone knows is dangerous there, says a lot about Johnny's confidence. Well, and it says a lot about him that at 10 0, he's already ranked number three and bringing it to the number one ranked John Salter in this fight, John. Yeah, really. Salter just waiting for Johnny to give him a little bit of a rise so he can start to pull on that leg. Sit up. Johnny not going to do anything at all. He's going to stay nice and based. Trying to keep heavy hips. Pinch down on the arm now that Salter Evelyn. is trapped. Oh, and that was Salter looking for the leg lock. Evelyn's lone submission win was via guillotine choke back in August of 2018. As they're back up on their feet coming up on the final minute of the second round. And Johnny Evelyn getting the best of the experienced. Former title challenger, John Salter. Under a minute left here in the round. Oh, 
Nice body kick. Whip that into Salter. And those body kicks and that little twitch of the leg that he's giving, it's, it's giving Salter problems. He's not able so to read right what's coming. Yeah, he's, again, John, you assess Evelyn's performance here coming up on the final 30 seconds of the second round against a guy who has been there and done that against, you know, John Salter. Well, I really like when Johnny goes into his orthodox stance, he utilizes that kick with the right leg. Stuffs the takedown. And he's got a good jab that he's using. When he goes into the southpaw, he doesn't seem to jab near as much. Under hook and Salter on his feet, knee up the middle. That and that was a little time. south time. of the equator. Both guys throwing in that time. moment. Here at the family arena, <laughs> a shot to the family jewels. Kind of both guys. A little bit off on Johnny's, but. Stay right there, buddy. Yep. Stay right there. No, stay there. Stay back here. So he will have up to five minutes to recover with 11 oh, seconds Taylor. officially yeah. left here yeah, in the yeah, middle you stay right there. stanza. Why don't you stay right over here, though? Stay right over here. Stay right over here. Stay right there with me. I know it was accidental, okay? Just gotta watch it. All right, all right, buddy. You ready to go? You ready to go? You ready to go? Time in. Fight. Action resumes. A touch of the gloves. And Evelyn resumes his attack. Head kick blocked by Salter. But a good round for the undefeated Evelyn, Big John. Fight. Last round. And for Salter. What is it going to take for him to salt away the victory? He's behind on your unofficial scorecard. Yeah, I've got it behind two rounds. I think John Salter needs to actually work towards using. Oh, oh. that was a beautiful kick right up the middle by Johnny Evans. And one up high, but it's Salter coming back with the left hand. Finish your thought about Salter, Johnny. Salter needs to use his hands to get inside and work for a takedown. He's got to get to the top position. If he's not in the top position on the ground, Johnny's going to be able to stop what he's been doing again so i look at it he's got to get this force of fight to the ground in the top position we continue to witness the growth of johnny eblin under the tutelage of the vaunted american top team and the insulter exchange in the stand-up and salter sneaks in a left hand and eblin's still a little wild with the striking john <laughs> every time he goes to southpaw morrow i'm seeing he starts to get a little oh. wider with the shots right to the body by salter there's a right to the body by evelyn johnny evelyn when he's in that orthodox stance clean chris straight shots beautiful jab he's done some great work beautiful kick with the right leg to the body Salter leading with the left hand, but not setting it up with the jab as they face. Sharp right hand down the middle, right to the body. Counter left upstairs by Salter. So Evelyn using the jab as a range finder, John, and unable to find the, the range right now. Yeah, and you can see right now, Evelyn, nice kick by Salter, but Evelyn is the guy who's right now, he's controlling the distance. When he wants to come in, he's coming in, landing his shots so just it. like that right there. And Salter cannot get his counters off. He's missing the target. Under three minutes left in the third round. Salter inside low kick. will try to do something to perhaps set up a takedown attempt, although again, against a guy who's been wrestling for 25 years, wrestled D1 at the University of Missouri. We talked about Salter's wrestling pedigree and Evelyn definitely getting the better of the striking exchanges. No doubt about it. And now marking up the face of Salter with right and caught him with a left hook. And again, notice when he's in that orthodox stance, man, the straight right hand down the pipe, just like you just saw, the beautiful jab. When he's orthodox, Johnny Evelyn is flowing. He's got the range down. He understands the timing. Nice check right there by Evelyn. Two minutes left in the fight. Jab from the southpaw stance by Evelyn. And I agree with Big John McCarthy that southpaw striking 
Not as proficient as from the orthodox stand. No, not. And, but, you know, and there is case in point. But he does create problems by going back and forth sure. with that. Oh, he's created plenty of problems for John Salter throughout this night. I'll tell you what, that right kick to the body has been money for Johnny M. We've talked about the fact that this was on paper. The toughest test of Johnny Eblen's burgeoning MMA career and thus far passing that test and looking to take down John Salter with a single leg. And this is that wrestling exchange. A lot of hardcores were looking forward to considering their background. John Salter was looking forward to this, he yeah, said. But he's got the legs now and there he goes. Well, he wasn't looking forward to that, John. <laughs> Not at all. And a minute left now in the fight. Steve Mako got Johnny Eblen to American Top Team where he met Mike Brown, King Mo, Dean Thomas, and that murderer's row of competitors. Next thing he knew, he was quitting his job, fighting full time. And now with less than 30 seconds left, Johnny Eblen on the cusp of conquering the biggest name of his career, looking to move to 11 and 0. Johnny, Johnny Eblen has been smoother than a bowl of boards and cheese in this. He has just been fantastic. The test is over. Let's see what kind of marks the judges give them. Ladies and gentlemen, for the decision, we'll go to your three judges at cage side. Marcel Varela, Jaron Vallel, David Hewitt, all have exactly the same at 30 to 27. I'll have it for the winner by unanimous decision, the human cheat code, Johnny Eblen. Well, good to have baseball back, and Johnny Eblen, he pitches a shutout in the biggest fight of his career, passing it. Bellator MMA live on Showtime from Mohegan Sun Arena. The time has come for the main event of the evening. Five five-minute rounds for the Bellator Middleweight World Championship. Sanctioned by the Mohegan Tribe Department of Athletic Regulation Chairman James Gessner, President of Sports and Entertainment, Mr. Tom Cantone, Chief of Mohegan Tribe Lynn Malerba, and Supervising at Cage Side Director Mike Mazzuli. And now, first introducing the Blue Corner. At six foot one, weighing in 185 pounds, entering his first world title fight, the number one ranked contender stands undefeated with 11 wins, no losses, by way of Kansas City, Missouri. He fights out of Coconut Creek, Florida, introducing the challenger, Johnny the Human Chico. And across the cage, the champion tonight fights out of the red corner. At six foot two, weighing in 185 pounds in an unparalleled career. Tonight, looking for his 50th professional victory, he enters holding 49 wins, seven losses, two draws, fighting out of Amsterdam, Netherlands. Ladies and gentlemen, the defending two-time Bellator middleweight world champion, Gekko. Sassy. And when the bell rings, the referee in charge, Kerry Hatley. All right, All right gentlemen, five, five rounds, rounds, rounds for the Bell Tour Middleweight Championship of the World. Conduct, Conduct yourself like place. champions at all times. Obey the rules. We went over in the dressing room at all times and fight hard. Touch them up if you're going to. Let's go to war. Mohegan Sun Arena, Bellator Middleweight Championship up for grabs. So many Cotty statistics for Musasi, including 33 first round finishes. The latest back in February against Eblen's right, teammate, Austin Vanderford. Right right All Ready? six Let's stoppage forward. wins for Eblen have come in the opening round. The bell, and we are underway, scheduled for five for the Bellator Gold. Oblique kick right off the 
jump for Johnny Eblin. Oblique kick, but take a look at the stance right now of Gegard Versace. He's kind of square. That's because he knows Eblin is a good wrestler, and he's going to give a little bit in the stand-up as far as opportunity for Johnny to try to connect because he believes he's that much better so he can stop the takedowns. There's something to say about being calm and composed at the highest level of MMA. Two of the all-time greats, hey, Fedor Emelianenko, and now Gegard Mousasi. They definitely do not like, they have great poker face. Oh my, the, fir the first time that I refereed Gegard Mousasi, he was fighting for the championship, and during the entire fight, which didn't last that long, his heart rate never went above 70. He was amazing to me. I was like, is this guy gonna fall asleep? <laughs> well, in many ways, it's a superman wears the glasses unassuming doesn't court a lot of publicity and yet we mentioned at the top of the telecast another all-time great habib Nurmagomedov, calling him the most underrated fighter in mma and definitely a case can be made that he's been underappreciated but all he continues to do is win at the highest level close to two decades john oh, oh but a beautiful combination beautiful left hand by john from johnny evelyn and evelyn touches up musasi Evelyn's like, hey guys, I get it. Musashi, oh, 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 and oh my! He's hurt. And look at the veteran Musashi recovering. Evelyn hurt him bad. Yes, he did. And now working the wizard. Johnny Evelyn needs to try to wow. stay right here. He's still hurt. There is no doubt that Gengar Musashi got rocked. And that's what Austin Vanderford tried to do in the opening round of his title defense. But Johnny Evelyn said, hey, when I Throw Musasi, don't call it a shock. Well, he just shocked Musasi's system. He definitely put it where if Gegar wasn't awake before, he's awake now. And you know what? Musasi has only been knocked out once. And that was against Uriah Hall, oh. which he avenged. But my, oh my, adversity for the champion here in round one. But again, look at his countenance, John. And, the, and this is this is the part where to go back to the keys to victory. In this position now, Johnny Evelyn needs to do damage. If there's something that we talked about at the beginning of the show is Gegard Musasi does not get damaged in just about any and fight. He remains calm under fire, although now Evelyn taking his back. So Evelyn, the underdog, coming in. Looking to keep Musasi from the golden milestone and what he hopes will be a golden night for American top teams. Couldn't ask for a better start for the challenger. Nice job. Down as Musasi's looking for the Kimura. Edward doing a nice job. Getting his feet. It was a little bit difficult for him to get him up, so he couldn't drag his feet. Johnny holding on to that. Nice ride, just taking his time. Not trying to get crazy. He knows he hurt him. He doesn't want to get crazy and lose his position or lose the, what he has accomplished so far in this round. Evelyn says he has the tank, the best skill set to take out Musasi. He grants it that Musasi has maybe a higher fight IQ, but Evelyn says he's younger, more athletic, and he thinks he has a better gas tank, and he's definitely putting the pressure on, but look at Musasi! The reversal by the champion, and he snatches the neck of Evelyn. And now an exchange incredible. I was going to say, Evelyn is losing his position. You have to realize when you're losing it, don't try to stick with it. Wow, 45 seconds left. Plenty to dissect already in this championship fight. Look, Evelyn brought in Sean Strickland to be one of his sparring partners in the stand-up because he knows how tough Sean is and that he likes to, you know, bang from the start. That brought confidence to his game, and he's showing that right now with Gegard. And Musasi, though, showing off his striking pedigree with the one-two, and Musasi, he trained with heavyweights, and oh yeah, owns a submission win over a mega heavyweight Mark Hunt in his career. He's recorded wins at middleweight, light heavyweight, and heavyweight, and hey, he's, he's been in tough here against Johnny Evelyn. Evelyn! Showcasing his wares in the opening five minutes and having fun doing so, John. Yes, he is. 
took Musasi down 11 times. Well, Musasi went back to the drawing board. It's become one of the best at defending the takedown, but hey, he went down courtesy of the power of Evelyn in that first five minutes. Well, he did. That was a great first round for Johnny Evans. Enough to give him the round, John? Oh, absolutely. Johnny Evans takes that round 10 now. Gotta ask these days, but touching. <laughs> you never know, my man. And there's a sharp jab by Musasi. That jab is what Musasi really needs to start to rely on. But there's that left hand again for Evelyn. Finding the range, the timing, delivering a body kick. Oh, but then Musasi tags Evelyn. Evelyn looking for the takedown. Explodes, reverse. And Musasi very active from his back, but Evelyn goes into side control. Great job by Johnny Evelyn. A lot of movement there, but he wins the scramble, gets to the top position now inside mount. And while it's been proven to be very difficult to keep Musasi down, Johnny Eblin working from side control, looking to maximize this advantageous position. And yet Musasi delivering right hands from the bottom. There's a left hand up top from Eblin. One thing's for sure, Musasi will not willingly accept this position, John. No, but this is, a, in my opinion, against Gegard, this is a really solid position. A lot of times wrestlers like to get into the half guard so they can trap on that leg. Gegard very good at moving himself into a position for the sweep or to escape. He's got a lot of movement to get through from that side control position. Two minutes gone here in the second round, and Johnny Eblen three for three in the takedown department. But here's the attempted reversal by Musasi. Gets to his feet momentarily, but Eblen bringing him back down to the canvas. And Eblen account acquitting himself well here in his first title shot. Musasi had that. That was a beautiful hook sweep that he got to get himself in a position to get back to his feet. Eblen right away just driving into him, still in a position where he has his hands around him. Musasi taken down yet again by Evelyn, his fourth takedown. And this is great work by Johnny Evelyn. He's really making Musasi work here. You want to get Gegard where his heart rate's up high. That's exactly what Johnny Evelyn is doing. And chance of let's go Johnny begin to fill Mohegan Sun Arena. Evelyn fighting out of Coconut Creek, Florida by way of Kansas City, Missouri. Minute 45 left and Gegard Musasi gets back to his feet while Evelyn tries to keep him along the fence and on the break, Evelyn delivers an elbow strike. That's a nice job by Johnny Evelyn on the exit. If you're gonna, you know, need that separation, make him pay one last time. Evelyn misses with a wild left. Jab through the guard by Musasi. Blocks that overhand left by Evelyn. Inside kick by the champion. Johnny getting a little bit more flat footed right now. Obviously, he's starting to feel a little bit of the heart rate going up, trying to gain some time that he can breathe and get his heart rate down. And to the 10th minute of this championship fight. And Evelyn has looked very good and lands a nice combination there, culminating with that left hook to the side of Musasi's head. Here's a good kick from. Musasi and uh, may have bounced off the cup. And Evelyn lands a combination final 15 seconds of the second round and the game plan being put together by Evelyn and the crew. At American Top Team delivering dividends through two rounds of action here. Absolutely. Ah. 
mature fight. His fight IQ is up there. He's showing that. I have him up two rounds to none. Third round. Exchange of kicks. Edwin fainting. Really kind of nice head off the rhythm and nice combination. Land the right hand. Musasi avoided that other right, but now Evelyn sitting down on his punches. Really nice head movement by Johnny Evelyn. See good feints. Oh, nice jab countered by Musasi. That's that jab that Musasi needs to keep sticking. Half kick really lands for Musasi. Yeah, he moves back and avoids that combination from Evelyn. Sassi on defense, side steps that. Going from Southpaw. Exchange body kicks. Sasi seemingly wanting to continue to collect the data. And again, he, you know, he saw it in the feature, didn't know allegedly who Johnny Eblett is. Well, he's definitely beginning. He knows who he, knows he is. Very now. well through the first two rounds and yet never showing any panic. And yet Eblin continues to land the strikes. Although Musasi credited with 10 more strikes landed. Again, it's been the wrestling of Eblin and the striking. I mean, he hurt Gegard Musasi in the opening round. Uh, I'll say that Gegard has landed more strikes, but Johnny Eblin has landed the more powerful strikes throughout the game. And there's that overhand right that landed. Midway through the round in this championship fight again, the sharp shooting jab of Musasi, but no follow up. It's all single shots. Exactly. And yeah, that right now is because he's worried about the wrestling being taken down. But Johnny Evans has been successful with so far. Now Musasi pumps the jab. Evelyn fainting. Wanting to get Musasi to bite him. Scores with a lead right. Well, well, look at the difference right now. Oh, at least Johnny Evelyn, most of the time, he's moving his head. He's giving a little bit of movement, just like you see right there. Gegard Musasi's head's right on the center line. Yes, it is. And he just ate that body kick to the liver by the southpaw stance of Johnny Evelyn. Under a oblique kick from Musasi. The jab was parried by Evelyn. And again, John finding a home for that right hand. And another right hand lands for Evelyn to the face of the Bellator middleweight champion. Musasi's offense has to be comprised of a lot more than just the jab here against this hungry challenger. Johnny Evelyn just six years younger than Musasi at 30, but a huge disadvantage in experience. A major step up, and so far, he has proven that, yeah, he belongs in this championship fight as the number one contender. Final minute of the round. Rare right hand for Musas. What you saw just a moment ago when you saw Evelyn throw that big right hand just like he just did there. You need to see Musasi have a counter. When he's not countering, it's telling you he's tired. Take a look at Musasi right now. His mouth is open. He's breathing through his mouth. He's at an oxygen deficit right now. We'll check the kick through the right hand. Final 15 seconds. Another strong round for the challenger, Johnny Eblen. As we head into the championship round.
backdrop. Utilizing both his striking and his wrestling. He's got Gegard in a position where Gegard is not sure what's coming. We have entered the championship rounds. Round four, Musasi possesses one of the best jabs in the sport, but a jab alone won't be enough against Johnny Edwin, not on this night. Oh, Johnny Edwin right now, and he's gaining confidence as the fight's going on. Head kick, but you're right about Musasi's body language and the fact that he remains with his head on the center line. See right there, normally you're seeing a good counter from Musasi. It's almost like he's a little tired and he's just unable to get it off. Nice job by Johnny Edwin. Make it six takedowns for Johnny Eblen. One minute gone in round four. Gegard Musasi most of the time able to get to the top position against all of his opponents. Has not found that once in this fight. Again, finds himself with his back against the cage. Johnny Evelyn putting a lot of pressure on him. Not a lot of damage, but time is just clicking by. And he's having to carry Johnny Evelyn's weight. Getting more and more tired. Evelyn. So hook in with as Musasi's back, he has one guillotine choke, the lone submission victory for Johnny Evelyn. As Musasi finds himself in rough waters against the number one contender. Evelyn needs to be very careful of not allowing Musasi to turn inside. Musasi. Back control has been submitted three times. Never be a rear naked choke. Right now, there's not even close to just what we call a seatbelt position. Controlling the position with Musasi, but there's no danger right now to a submission. That can always change. Nice job riding to the top position. Just continuing to put pressure on Musasi. Musasi trying to bring the knee up. Not quite there. Sassy walking down, Evelyn now delivers the body kick with just single shots. There's that jab that misses. Evelyn looking to parry the jab. And again, chance of let's go Johnny and heading into the final minute of the fourth round. Evelyn secures another takedown, make that seven in the final minute of this penultimate round. This is where I feel Johnny Evelyn really needs to start to open up. Start to try to do things that cause damage here. You've been winning the stand-up in the outside. Your wrestling's been great. Start doing damage to the ground. Make it to where he doesn't even want to get back to his feet. Champion.
champion Musashi heading into the fifth and final round. Champion, I've had the chance to, to work with him in broadcasting, a chance to pick his brain. As, uh, you talk about a student of the game when it's MMA boxing. Look, he's already feeling it. Fifth and final round, he feels that his protege on the verge of becoming just the seventh fighter to hold the Bellator middleweight championship, Johnny Eblen with less than five minutes now to pull off this upset. Johnny Evans out, moving, good footwork, sticking the jab. He knows where he's at. He knows how much more he has to do. You also know what Gegard Musasi, oh, nice counter right cross, and Evelyn now letting Musasi know about it. What do you make of Gegard Musasi tonight? Not taking anything away from Johnny Evelyn because it's been Johnny Evelyn's night and that's been the case, but anything that you can point out that might lead to even more insight as to what has not been a, a great night for Gegard Musasi at all. Uh, no, it's definitely not been a great night for him, but that's because of Johnny Evelyn. It's the things that Johnny Evelyn... I want you to go back to the first round. Was he able to hurt him? Yeah. In the first round, again, we talked about it at the start of the show. Gegard does not get damaged. He got damaged in the first round. He's been damaged in a couple other rounds, and that has made a difference in this fight. Johnny Evelyn has just done a fantastic job. Musasi 7-1 and one here in Bellator again, in the midst of his second reign, the low loss, outpointed by Rafael Lovato Jr. for the title. Lovato Jr. forced to relinquish the title and retire from the sport, and now it's Johnny Evelyn. How impressed are have you been with his striking? I mean, super impressed. I've been saying for a while, his striking is getting better and better. He's, he's more confident in his hands. He's more confident in this fight than I've seen him in any fight. <laughs> Obviously, he put in the work that he needed. He went the rounds with the guys that were pushing him and making him better, and it's all paying off tonight. Another takedown attempt pays off for the challenger. Johnny Eblen has completely neutralized one of the best finishers in mixed martial arts. We have sung his praises, rightfully so, throughout the night, but Johnny Eblen earning the praise. There's always that night that comes when yep. you know, it's not your night, but it is your opponent's, and everything they do works for them, and everything that you try just doesn't seem to work for you. And That's what we've seen tonight. And Evelyn told us, he warned us, he said, hey, he doesn't think a lot of people realize how good he is because he hasn't fought many high-level guys. He recorded a big win over the veteran John Salter, who, of course, challenged Musasi, but this has been, you know, an amazing effort by Johnny Evelyn and Gegard Musasi is stuck. He is stuck, you know, and this is why everyone gets into MMA math, and we try to tell you, look, you can't, can't use MMA math. Styles make fights. Certain people on certain nights can beat anybody. Johnny Evelyn is that good. We've seen him before as far as have nights where he just, everything he did worked. And tonight, it's happening again for him. He looks fantastic. Began his athletic career in wrestling at the age of five. We talked about his credentials at the University of Missouri. And then Steve Moko, well-known and accomplished amateur wrestler, brought Johnny Eblen to American Top Team, where he has trained with an all-star camp, some of the best fighters in the sport. And Johnny Eblen is on his way to proving that he is one of the best fighters in the sport as he is 25 seconds away from upsetting an all-time great in Gate Guard Musasi. 
not only upsetting, in my opinion, winning every round of the fight. And putting a punctuation mark on the proceedings with another takedown. Johnny Evelyn. What a performance. The human cheat code. Seemingly has found a way to break Gegard Mousasi's code and Evelyn in the center of the cage taking a moment. King Mo. And King no. Mo. And no. Hey, he's oh. letting it be known. American oh. top team, one of the top camps, and they may also be adding to their extensive trophy case here tonight. Fuck no. My fucking belt. I'm the best in the fucking world. With the official decision, here is Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone the distance in tonight's world title fight, we go now to your three judges at cage side. Brian Miner, Marcel Varela, David Peabody. All see it exactly the same at 50 to 45 for the winner by unanimous decision. And now the new Bellator middleweight world champion, Johnny the Human Chico. Gracious in defeat, the class act that is Gegard Mousasi, but wow, a clean sweep on the judges' scorecards, and Johnny Eblen has live on CBS and streaming on Paramount Plus. Bellator MMA now presents tonight's co-main event by five-minute rounds for the Bellator middleweight. World Championship. Introducing first the blue corner at five foot ten, weighing in 184.8 pounds, unbeaten inside the Bellator cage. He holds and impresses overall record of 31 professional victories, two losses, ranked at number three. He enters his first ever world title fight, presenting the challenger, Eric Tole. And across the cage, the champion tonight fights out of the red corner at six foot one, weighing in 184 pounds even. After a dominant performance to capture the title tonight, he makes his first defense, entering as an undefeated professional. 12 victories, no defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, the defending Bellator middleweight world champion, Johnny the Human Chico. And the referee in charge, Frank Trigg. Mike, we bring him in. This is the bring him in. Come on, guys. Come on. I'm good. Gentlemen, you see the instructions in the locker room. Obey my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. If you want to touch gloves, do it now. Let's go back to the corners and come out swinging. <laughs> They're not gonna touch gloves, they're going to intensely stare through each other as we get set for this Bellator middleweight championship fight. All six of Johnny Eblen's finishes have come in the first round for Anatoly Tokov. He has 11 wins via first round knockout Ready? or submission Ready? and has a victory Fight. over former Bellator middleweight champion Alexander Shlomenko, the bell and round one. and overall experience for Anatoly Tokov. With this being his 34th professional fight compared to Eblin's 13th, but Eblin, a fast learner, went down to Florida 
He was introduced to ATT by two-time NCAA National Wrestling Champion at Iowa in 2008 U.S. Olympian Steve Mako. One of the better decisions Mako's made. He's made many, but definitely changed Evelyn's life. Oh, he absolutely did. Steve Mako, is, he's a crazy man, but he's an outstanding wrestling coach. And he brought Johnny Evelyn there because he saw something in him. And there has been no doubt, everybody that trains with Johnny Evans says, oh my God, this guy is the best middleweight fighter in the world. There is no doubt he's that good. Calf kick by Evelyn, came into the sport. He's a hardworking wrestler out of the University of Missouri. Same school that former Bellator champions Ben Askren and Mike Chandler attended. There's the combination by Evelyn. And since going to ATT, really focusing on his striking, and has really grown exponentially when it comes to his boxing techniques. Well, he's now throwing combinations that you just don't see a lot of mixed martial artists throw. He's throwing double hooks. He's doing all kinds of things that are not easy to do, but he's doing it based upon the fact that his wrestling is so good. He can get himself out of bad positions at times. Johnny Evelyn is the real deal, and the fact that he utilizes all elements of mixed martial arts makes him extremely difficult. Oh, counter right by Tokov, who immediately latches on to Evelyn. And you saw, out of position, but back, was unable to get to that point of a takedown, but that was a nice right hand by Anatoly Tokov. Left high kick blocked by Tokov. Body kick by Tokov. Tokov began training military hand-to-hand -hand combat and judo at 14. And of course, Evelyn, we talk about his background as a wrestler, started at the age of five. Midway point of the opening round, scheduled for five five-minute rounds for the Bellator middleweight crowd. The jab lands for Tokov. Good exchange. Very nice exchange. Tokov, we talked about his intelligence as a fighter and his ability to change the momentum. For a little bit there, you saw Johnny Evelyn being able to back him up. He knew that he can't have that happen, and so right away starts creating that lateral movement, circling off, making it so Johnny Evelyn cannot back him up. Very intelligent. Since that incredible victory over Musasi to become champion, Evelyn been doing the a lot of sparring and uh, really working on growing his fight IQ. He told us that it's it's never been better, and uh, he's been working on going to the body more, getting slicker with his defense, and utilizing that southpaw stance more, and we've seen glimpses of that so far in this fight. Oh, yeah. He started off with that wrestling base, and he was a guy, man, he would take you down, ground and pound, and get the TKO. And then once he really started working on the stand-up, he has just evolved as a fighter, and so he utilizes the wrestling to make his stand up more dangerous because you're worried about him taking you down but no he comes in with his hands and lands clean shot level change by Evelyn but Tokov doing a good job there overhook and underhook and now Evelyn backs him to the fence as they grapple at close quarters exchanging knees jockeying for position Evelyn putting all of his weight on Tokov, but Tokov's one strong middleweight. Tokov's defensive wrestling is just outstanding. He's got great balance, and he's able to just put weight on the arms, start to tire you out. You're seeing what he's doing right here. He's just kind of hanging on Johnny's arms. Now, Johnny's got his hands clasped, but in the position they're at, he's going to have a hard time. He's going to have to bring his hands either up high or down low towards the hips to start to get that body lock position where he can take him down. On the break, Evelyn looking for that slashing elbow, misses with it, but lands the left. It was a nice exit by Johnny Evelyn. They'll always leave them with something to remember on the exit. Ty Plum and some knees from Evelyn, showcasing his diversive offensive attack. With effectiveness. And going to break, I known to create, you know, new words. Diverse, <laughs> diverse offensive attack. And the diversity is on display. Calf kick by Evelyn. See, on those calf kicks like that, Tokov needs to counter and make Evelyn pay for it. He cannot just sit there. Double jab, down. sorry, John, double jab, chopping right hand by Tokov. Good combination. A lot of fainting. 
Each wanting to get the other two. But first, nice fade there, and Tokov lands the right, avoids the combo from Evelyn. Good body movement by Evelyn, trying to showcase his defense, looking to slip the punch, and does so. The left, but got caught with the right. Very clean jabs by Anatoly Tokov, though, as that jab is it's setting up his other shots. Sharp jab splits the guard of Evelyn by Tokov and clips Evelyn Ouas. Hard jab to the face by Tokov. Tokov getting that range down. His counter strikes are starting to land. Bellator MMA on CBS from the Kia Forum in Los Angeles. You're watching the second round of this Bellator middleweight championship fight between the champion Johnny Eblen in the red gloves, the challenger Anatoly Tokov in the blue. Big John McCarthy and Mauro Ranallo here at Cape Side, joined by Amanda Guerra, Josh Thompson at the fight desk. Double jab again, and Tokov doing a good job of making sure he doubles up on that jab. That jab's making a difference in this round. He's establishing that jab. It's making his right hand be effective time. Big right hand. Big right about. hand from Evelyn. Looking for the home run shot, the body kick as well. And Evelyn now getting aggressive in his attack. It's two minutes have elapsed here in the second. And everything for Tokov begins with that textbook stick, John, the jab. It does, but you can see Tokov is starting to breathe hard. Take a look at the color on his face right now. He is having a little bit of an oxygen deprivation problem. You can see it. And he's making investments to the body with that kick, trying to slow down Evelyn's advances. And Evelyn showing the vestiges of a battle on his oh, face. No doubt, he's taking some shots, especially in this round. Tokov's been doing very well, but you can see he's got to find those places within the round where you can take that deep breath, get yourself back to feeling normal. Yeah, Tokov has landed twice as many strikes as Eblin in this round. And there, nice one-two by Eblin. And Eblin again sits down on that right hand. That's two right hands in a row that land cleanly for Johnny Eblin. An intense battle here where both Tokov and Evelyn sitting down on their punches, looking to break the, the will and the spirit of their opponent. They hope to walk out of the Kia Foreman in LA as the Bellator middleweight champ. Nice right hand body kick, left hook combo by Tokov. Sprawl by Tokov, but then Evelyn, when Tokov bounced up, caught him with the right. Very nice sequence by Anatoly Tokov. Oh, what a shot by Tokov! He staggered Evelyn! That was on the top of the head. And Evelyn comes back with a one-two of his own. Anatoly would be lucky if that didn't hurt his hand, man. You hit someone on the top of the head, it's like hitting a, just a stone wall. And you know, still to come, Fedor Emelianenko's final fight, Tokov's mentor, he's had issues with his right hand over the years as well, but overcame so much. Oh! Tokov gets Good dropped shot. by the right hand from Evelyn, but bounces up right away, able to clinch with Evelyn. And now Evelyn backs him to the fence, but Evelyn was able to drop him with the right, and now drops him with a takedown. I think that was an elbow that he actually landed on Tokov. And that's a big game changer. It definitely is, because now Evelyn unloading on Tokov. That was a huge elbow shot. You saw earlier, Lorenz Larkin, yes. what an elbow will do. Elbows on the are prelims, not a short candidate. Johnny Evelyn taking this round back by hurting Tokov. Tokov was winning it. Effective damage right here by Johnny Evelyn. The ebb and flow of a mixed martial arts championship fight. We are going to round three after this. As we are set for round number three, Ready? Evelyn's first Ready? title defense, Fight. and Evelyn's right eye was swelling, beginning to really show the effects of what has been a tough, tough
task as, as expected. I mean, once you're the champion, it doesn't get easier. And when you're the champion, all you have is a target on you. And look at I thought Tokov was winning that round until that elbow landed, knocking him down to the ground. That is what we're looking for, damage in the fight. Johnny Eblen landed that damage. It was the biggest shot of the round. That's why Johnny Eblen gets around 10 9. Tokov continues to work on that right eye of Eblen with his jab. They exchange body kicks. Eblen leading with the left, really using it as a bait. And now Eblen with the level change and runs right through Tokov into the takedown, immediately lands a couple of right hands, or make that left hand for good measure. One of the things that Eblen, you take a look at the difference between him and Tokov. Tokov is throwing straight punches in the stand up, Eblen's throwing. Looping shots. That's why Tokov has been successful. He's got the shorter reach, but he's getting there faster with the straight punches. Waist lock employed by Eblet. And grappling going out now. Tokov looking to turn into Eblet, defending this attempt at the takedown. Eblen is two for four in takedowns thus far in this fight, while Tokov 0 for 1. Eblen getting his hands locked. Nice him up. Job. Takes him down and again, ground and pound from, and that punch under the armpit. Dan Henderson is on uh, location here tonight. The H-bomb that felt Fedor in their fight was under the armpit, very similar. Anytime that comes under the arm like that, you cannot see the punch, and it's always the ones that you don't see that hurt you the most. And that nice. return by Eblen. Those mat returns, Morrow, every time you get taken down like that, you work your way to get back up, and then boom, you're going back down. It is demoralizing as a fighter. And right now, what Johnny Evelyn is trying to do is he's starting to try to break Anatoly Tokov. What he's saying is my conditioning is better than yours. I can push harder than you, and I'm going to push you off the cliff. You're an NC2A Division I wrestler. Conditioning should never be an issue, right, John? Even when your MMA career, what wrestling does is incredible. I mean, so many mixed martial artists talk about wrestling being the key base. Spinning back elbow missed by Evelyn, but it, it builds every facet of a fighter when you're a wrestler. There is, there is nothing. Mental, physical, nothing. strategy. Exactly. I couldn't have said it better. There's nothing more grinding than that wrestling in that room. The work it takes to be good at it, it just it builds character, it builds a work. Final two minutes of the third. Right hand countered by Tokov lands. And again, straight punches by Tokov. Cap kick by Evelyn. Oh, and Evelyn just missed with that right cross. Evelyn level change, sprawl by Tokov, defends the takedown. And Evelyn now four of seven in the takedown department. And again, with those takedowns, we've seen Tokov bounce back up. We've seen the mat returns, but it's really been, for the most part, large part, a tremendous striking battle where each of them have had their moments. Each of them had their moments. The big moments have normally been with Johnny Evelyn, though. He's landed the ones that have knocked Tokov down. He's gotten the takedowns, the big elbow strikes on the brakes. Those are those are the differences in this fight right now. Evelyn moving away from the power of Tokov in the orthodox stance, looking to unload that right, and Evelyn using his striking, trying to set up a takedown attempt, and again, wailing away, wide looping shots that miss. That was a nice shot that he landed at the beginning of that series, though. Tokov took it well, but man, you can only take so many before you take Oh, and he just shot. landed another stinging shot, and Tokov took it. But like you say, John, punch resistance begins to wear down the more you absorb. Johnny Evelyn just needs to start throwing just a little bit straighter on his punches. Those are going to get there faster, and they're going to hit the target. Nice right hand lands for Tokov. Many expected this to be a battle of attrition. We are headed into the championship rounds for the Bellator Middleweight Championship.
Everything I said was true, though, and it's incredible yes, it to was. see such a reunion of these all-time greats. And again, it speaks to the respect that Fedor Emelianenko has earned as Evelyn is on the ground momentarily, and immediately Tokov goes after him, and then Evelyn pops him with a right uppercut. Evelyn again wins that exit. Again, Evelyn, if he'd be much better off with the straight punches. Nice level nice, job. Nice, beautiful, beautiful job of turning that corner for my Evelyn. And you're right, John, it's not just straight ahead. He creates angles with the takedowns. And that makes it so much more difficult to defend. And right now, if you're Anatoly Tokov, you got off of that stool, you had your minute break, and now you're having a guy with all that weight, 200 pounds basically, crushing down on you, and after all that work, it tires you out faster, it's wearing. Evelyn does have one submission victory, the guillotine choke against Wayman Carter back in 2018, and there is a man we, we talked about, how important he has been to the maturation process of Johnny Evelyn, that is King Mo. Evelyn calls him his big brother and his number one hype man. Well, he's the, he's the run, one running the controller on the human cheek. <laughs> and that's the guy who christened him with that nickname. And so, again, when you, you know, the old cliche, well, it's a cliche because it's true. Iron sharpens iron, and both these fighters have a lot of iron in their calves. Boy, both of them do, you're right. Tokov really needs to work to get back to his feet. He cannot stay in these positions. The fight is starting to slip away from him. Johnny Evans starting to take over. And when I, when I talked about that RPM level that he's able to maintain compared to his opponents, this is what I'm talking about. He pushes you past that point. Your comfort zone is gone. Beautiful mat return. Kokob looks to turn into Evelyn. And you're absolutely right, John. As always, the, the, the pressure, the pace. Johnny Evelyn's gas tank is, is very big. And he's really continuing to utilize that wrestling. And, continues to break down Anatoly Tokov here in the penultimate round. Now six of 11 in the takedown department for Eblen. Very sweet job. You saw Johnny take that right hand, bring that ankle away from him. That brought Anatoly back to the mat, brings the knee up. Anatoly has got no answer right now to get rid of the hands of Johnny Eblen can't break the hands and if you can't break the hands oh, another elbow strike and a jab and, a and another level change oh. and another takedown but it's Tokov trying to find a way to neutralize Johnny Eblen and of course at this stage of the fight bodies are slippery so any submission attempt will be that much more difficult well a lot of people are going to look and think well he's got a gear this is not a gear no. he has no legs engaged in this there's no way that he's going to get any kind of choke right here. Right now, basically, he's trying to control the posture and position of Johnny Evelyn. And think of all the times that you've watched Anatoly Tokov work his way back to his feet. Now, what did you just see, Marl? Now he's settled. He's settled for the position, which is telling you, I'm getting tired. His power bar is depleting. Final 60 seconds of the fourth round. Tokov trying to control Evelyn's posture. Evelyn now creating some separation, looking to pass the guard into side control, content on delivering elbows, and now again has Tokov's back. Employing that waist lock, and Tokov, you're right, John, he's muted in his recovery here just accepting his fate at this particular moment in time yeah at this point he cannot figure out how to break the hands and stop what johnny evelyn's doing every time he gets to a position where he gets himself back to his feet johnny switches it up opens up lands the shot goes back for the takedown or just takes and elevates him up and matt returns him this has been a dominating round by and Johnny Evelyn. We saw the domination when he won the title, mixing up the striking and the wrestling against Musasi. He's a complete package, and Evelyn exploding again. The level change looking for the single leg. Fifth and final round coming up.
Fifth and final round, Johnny Eblen firing up the crowd here at the Kia Forum, just outside of Los Angeles in Inglewood. It's a suburb of LA, and Danatoli Tokov trying to, he's bouncing up and down, trying to summon that inner warrior, trying to find a way to get back into this fight. And how do you have, well, on cue, John, there's the scorecard. <laughs> Look, I'm being honest, I, I had the, the second round going towards Tokov until that knockdown with the elbow. I got Johnny Elbin in a shutout right now. He is starting to take over this fight. He's dominating. Evelyn says his goal is to clear out the division. He said he is going to be the GOAT, and the more you talk to him, the more you believe him. Self-confidence is everything. Well, one, and he's backing it up. Yeah, and one of the things, you know, look, if you see Johnny Eblen in training, Johnny Eblen puts himself in horrible positions and then works his way out of him. So there's nothing inside the cage that he faces that he hasn't faced in training and worked his way out of. So even before becoming a champion, he had the work ethic of one. That builds, that builds confidence that, hey, I can face anything. I'm not worried about anything. I can get myself out. Right now, Anatoly, he needs a home run, man. He needs to land that big right hand. 17 of his 31 wins have come via knockout. Last one in his last fight when he destroyed Muhammad Abdullah at Bellator 282. The same night, Evelyn became champion, so they're on the same schedule. Nice head movement right there, slipping and Slipping and ripping by Johnny Eblen. Final three minutes of the fight. And Eblen again shoots in for the takedown. And records. Big time takedown right there. That's right in front of us, Morrow. And you can see Anatoly Tokov breathing hard. He has worked his butt off to get up out of this position throughout the fight. And he just cut, cannot get to the point where he can break free of Johnny Evelyn. Evelyn's the one that's going to determine when that break occurs. Evelyn has now recorded eight takedowns and 15 attempts, continuing to deplete the tank of Anatoly Tokov as again takes him back down and just dominates from the back, rounding Tokov, wearing him down, systematically dismantling him. Out striking, out grappling. Johnny Eblen in his first title defense. Showing the world why he is the Bellator middleweight champion. Big time Matt return. This is unbelievably defeating if you're Anatoly Tokov. You work your way back. Johnny Eblen picks you up, takes you back down. And this is a guy undefeated in the Bellator cage at this point. Anatoly Tokov has been fantastic. 31 and two for his career. And he is just being dominated in this fight. Evelyn tenderizing the right leg of Tokov. Adding insult to injury here. Continues to just Drive the knee, and now Tokov able to come back to his feet. But I believe that Evelyn probably allows him just so he can do the mat return again. And he's all, he almost put himself right into a mount position. Now you're seeing it again. Anatoly, tired, he's starting to accept. Yeah. Struggling against the uber aggressive Johnny Evelyn all over the number three ranked contender. Bloodied up his face, battering his body, taking away his foundation with those knees to his legs. Johnny Eblen has demonstrated a little bit of everything that makes him an undefeated fighter. And the best of 185 Johnny, in Bellator. Johnny Eblen. And even equally impressive is that Tokov Thank is you. now going for the choke. It's incredible.
appreciating what they've witnessed through five championship rounds. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone the distance in this world title fight, we'll go now to your three judges at cage side. Your first, Chris Crail, scores the fight 50 to 45, while judges Ron McCarthy and Elliot Kelly both see it the same 49 to 46. All have it for the winner by unanimous decision. And still, Bellator middleweight world champion, Johnny, the human cheat code, Eblen. And Johnny Eblen now stands alone at first for the longest active win streak in Bellator with nine consecutive wins.